This is a masterpiece of Meiji era technology. But what's so amazing about it? This was formed from a single sheet of iron. That's right, just one sheet. It has no seams. Using just a hammer, the artisan created complex, beautiful shapes. What a mystery. The artisan Sobe Yamada was a brilliant 19th century metalsmith. The St. Louis World's Fair featured cutting-edge cultural developments from around the world. Sobe's work was internationally acclaimed and awarded first prize. It was said that no one existed before Sobe and no one after. But when Sobe died suddenly at the age of 44, his techniques died with him. Even today, they're considered impossible to replicate and forever lost in the mists of time. Iron doesn't have the cohesiveness of copper. It's difficult to process. We don't know how Sobe did it. It's very difficult. For 100 years, Sobe's extraordinary skill has stumped art historians. Now it's up to Supreme Skills to take up the challenge. With the cooperation of a museum, we use the latest technology to analyze Sobe's work. And guess what? New discoveries come to light. It's thin. Extremely thin. We also track down the son of a disciple of the Sobe tradition. He can help us solve the mystery. But... Dad always said it's better to leave it a mystery. What? He won't help us? Can we solve this century-old riddle? In this special episode, we'll find out Supreme Skills! So this time we're up against the master craftsmen of the past, huh? That's right. I'm sorry I'm so ignorant, but I'd never heard of Sobi Yamada before. Is he that big a deal? Yes. There were many artisans working during the Meiji period. I think Sobi deserves to be ranked among the top ten. I see. It's great to see his work up close. Yes. First, this piece. Wow, it's amazing. This work is titled Pigeon on Roof Tile. The metal pigeon sits on a roof tile. The whole piece is made from one sheet of iron. See how soft the feathers look. It's hard to believe they're made of iron. In contrast, the tile portion looks thick and solid, and yet the piece is all made from the same material. That's what made Sobi such a genius. Did he really create this from one flat sheet of iron? Yes. You have to keep saying that. It seems impossible. <laughs> but there's an even more amazing piece. This rabbit. This is what we'll try to replicate. We received a request from the Kaga City Art Museum, which owns the work. They wanted us to discover the secrets of how it was made to pass down to future generations. The rabbit is Sobe's greatest puzzle. It presents two great challenges. First, the detailed face that even includes wrinkles around the eyes. Second, it's two ears, which are 11 centimeters long. How did Sobe extend a thin sheet of iron so far? No one knows. If you try to do it using ordinary forging techniques, you can't avoid creating stress that cracks the material. 
And nobody asked him to do it? That's right. Wow. What a weirdo. <laughs> We're in search of a lost art. We'll ask a special man to help us. Yuya Kobayashi is 36 years old. He's an up-and-coming metalsmith. Metalsmithing involves the use of a hammer to shape sheets of metal into desired forms. Iron is hard and difficult to form. Very few Japanese metalsmiths use it in their work. This lion is an example of Kobayashi's work. Its dynamic form and delicate features can only be achieved through the art of hammering. This work uses a bone motif. Careful attention to detail. That's where Kobayashi really shines. <laughs> Kobayashi accepts the Sobi challenge. He's motivated by a special reason. This is a real thrill for me. <laughs> Actually, Sobi Yamada is one of Kobayashi's heroes. Thirteen years ago, he saw an exhibition of Sobi's work and was inspired to become a metalsmith himself. I remember being really excited. I wanted to see if I could go as far as he had in his art. It set a goal for me in my heart. Kobayashi sets to work. He uses an iron sheet just one millimeter thick. He practices making the face, one of the work's most difficult challenges. Sobi's rabbit has a rich expressiveness that lives in its dynamic lines, especially those around the eyes. But those lines are hard to replicate. Using cutting-edge equipment, we'll analyze the rabbit's structure. And when we do... It's thin. Extremely thin. The indented edge of the eye is only 0.5 millimeters thick. It takes incredible skill to create that without cracking the material. Kobayashi has roughed out the main contours. Now he starts on the details. He uses cold chisels called tagane. The chisel transmits the hammer blow to the iron material. He changes the shape of the metal a tiny bit at a time. I move it less than 10 microns at a time. I'm working very slowly, very carefully. <laughs> he works on it for a week. The rabbit's face slowly emerges. He's reached a crucial point. The rabbit's eyes. Sobi's masterpiece is only half a millimeter thick here. Kobayashi extends the iron to the breaking point in order to achieve the same depth. Seven hours later. The eyes gradually come alive. Can he do it without cracking the metal? I just finished the pupils. I didn't break through. It's all right. Feast your eyes. 
A rabbit's face made from a single sheet of metal. Look at that depth. The detail rivals Sobeys. Kobayashi has cleared the first challenge with flying colors. Let's do it. The time has come. He's ready to forge the whole rabbit. But there's a problem. Since he's working with a single sheet, he'll have to start with the ears. He'll elongate the ears, make the body, and finish with the face. The ears are 11 centimeters long. The biggest problem of all is the first thing he encounters. How will he handle it? He begins by starting a forging fire. He heats a thin sheet of iron. No, the ears have to be long. I'm guessing so be heated as metal to make them. Hot iron is softer and easier to extend. Kobayashi thinks that Sobi probably used heat to achieve the long ears. He heats the sheet to more than 1,000 degrees. Did Sobi really use such an extreme technique? Two hours later, Kobayashi measures the ears. 2.8, about 3 centimeters. It looks good. But! Ah, uh, no good. It cracked. Split. I broke through. Here. Oh no! A hole! He failed! It's too thin. I hit the limit sooner than I expected. Uh. The hole appeared where the hammer blows were strongest. Kobayashi reached the limit almost immediately. Hmm. Subi's technique remains a mystery. It won't be easy to replicate. Unless he can conquer the ears, Kobayashi can't complete the face. He's in trouble. Then, we get some information about Sobi that might help. We learn about a metalsmith who supposedly inherited Sobi's secrets. Hello? Are you Mr. Yamashita? Yes. Koji Yamashita! Is he really a disciple of the Sobi line? This is Sokyo. Actually, the disciple was Koji's father, Sokyo Yamashita. He passed away 40 years ago, leaving behind no disciples of his own. The secret forging technique died with him. But Koji wants to show us something. He says it's under the floor. I'd like to take a look. Could I have a little time? Sokyu's possessions have long been stored here. They're in that wooden box. A look inside reveals many old forging tools. It's great they're still there. Do they offer any clues? What's this? It's called Yatoko. It's used to hold the piece in the fire for hot forging. 
just as Kobayashi thought. Sobi heated the iron. But... Dad would repeatedly heat it, then cool it. What? Then cool it. Cool it? So it seems Sobi combined hot and cold forging into one process. This is a valuable clue. But how were the two techniques combined? Kobayashi has to figure that out himself. I've never done anything this complicated before. <laughs> After much anguish, Kobayashi comes up with a method. He'll use water. After heating the iron sheet, he'll cool the area around the rabbit's ears with water. Then, he'll hammer the cooled places. But why? Last time, he hammered the hot metal, and it became thin and cracked where the hammer struck. This time, he'll cool the surrounding area. Then, he'll hit the cooled places. He hopes this will extend the softer, heated places. And because he hits only the harder, cooled places, he hopes to maintain thickness. I'm not sure, but I think this might be how Sobi did it. Has Kobayashi figured out Sobi's secret technique? Wow, they're much longer now. The ears. Great. So how long are they? These are 65 millimeters. You've made it to 65, huh? The ears are much longer than before. But... Ah, uh, here, here. It's cracked, isn't it? That's right. The problem lies between the ears. It got too thin there and cracked. With Kobayashi's method, the space between the ears must be pushed downward to make the ears longer. That process reduces the thickness. When the ears reach a length of six centimeters, the iron cracks. This really is a mystery, isn't it? Yes. It's a tough nut to crack. <laughs> How thick is the material between the ears on Sobe's rabbits? We use x-rays to find out. Right between the ears, it's a little bit thicker. Oh, more than a millimeter for sure. What a puzzle. The maximum thickness is a surprising 1.5 millimeters. The place that tends to be thinner is, in fact, thicker. The mystery deepens. Unless Kobayashi can unlock the secret, he has no chance of approaching Sobi's technique. Kobayashi was on the wrong track. Hmm. After three weeks of trial and error, He's back to square one. The road to the heights of the Meiji Master is steep indeed. So difficult. Kobayashi's got his back to the wall. But then he remembers something. This is Sobi's journal. Kobayashi saw Sobi's journal when he visited the museum. Damaged. It looks like he often failed. It was trial and error. Sobi himself failed dozens of times as he developed his secret technique. Kobayashi sees himself in Sobi's struggles. In the act of creation, the challenge of doing something no one's ever done before adds a spice that I think is essential. 
It seems to me that master artists of the past were the kind of people who always walked that creative path. Kobayashi tries again. Time, the shape's completely different. Where are the ears? I really struggled. <laughs> but at this point, I think this is really a smart way to do it. Kobayashi's trying something new. Let's watch him in a live demonstration. Please go ahead. These two bumps will become the ears. They measure... 46.3 millimeters. How will he extend them without cracking the metal in between? Supposed to be extending the ears, but he's hitting far away from them. Why? I think it's bulging a little now. In the end, I'll use this extra material to make the ears longer. I see. Here's his strategy first, he builds up extra material taken from the piece's edge. He keeps moving it inward until it reaches the tops of the ears. As he repeats this process, the ears grow longer. This is Kobayashi's clever strategy. I have to do it all at once, so I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Please take your time. <laughs> Thirty minutes later. This should do it for now. Okay. I think they're longer. 47.72. Ah, oh, you did it! The part between the ears is the same, right? That's right! He hasn't touched that part at all! It can't be any thinner than before! It's the same thickness, right? Yes, uh-huh. Helped by just a small hit, he's developed a whole new technique. He's closing in on the master from a century ago. Supreme skill! Maybe a hundred years ago, Sobi himself went through this stage when making his rabbit. Maybe. Amazing! Kobayashi started on this project a month ago. He's on the final stretch. It takes a day's work to add just five millimeters to the ear's length. He surpasses his previous record of 6.5 centimeters. But now he has a new problem. At the base of the ears, a magnified view reveals countless tiny cracks. Actually, this is due to metal fatigue. After being hit tens of thousands of times, the material itself has lost its strength. All my hammer blows have pushed the metal beyond its limits. I'm afraid to keep going. Is his method a mistake? Let's x-ray Sobi's rabbit one more time. His rabbit has tiny cracks too. That might mean that Sobi used the same technique. Kobayashi could well be on the right path. 
he files out the cracks and carefully carries on. He battles metal fatigue, just as Sobi did before him. Will the material hold up long enough for him to finish? Eight point five centimeters. Only a little way to go. But it cracked. A large gash has formed at the base of one ear. Failure. The problem started when he extended the ears in the place that eventually became the ear's base. Apparently, the sharp angle formed at that time caused an unexpectedly high amount of metal fatigue. The ears measure 8.5 centimeters, just shy of the ear length on Sobey's rabbit. I'm disappointed. <sighs> It's really difficult. Junior gets the news a few days later. Mm, that's too bad. You couldn't keep it from cracking, huh? I think if I just took my time and worked it more gently, I probably could avoid cracking it. Really? Yeah, I think so. So, basically, this is how Sobi did it. I do believe that, yes. I hope that eventually I'll be able to show everyone a successful replica. It's really a matter of seeing how close you can get to the achievements of past masters, or even to surpass them. That's right. A good project. Let's do it again. You bet. Using modern science and Kobayashi's skilled efforts, we unlock a century-old mystery. For now, the supreme mastery of this Meiji-era metalsmith remains too high to achieve. Sobe's rabbit continues to exemplify the greatness of our ancestors.